Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Thank you very much. And I want to say thank you very much to those of you that have uh, tuned in. Um, I'm really grateful that you tune in. I don't take it for granted. Without you, I would not be here. I would not be talking. But because of your encouragement, I am able to uh, come on this platform and engage you. Uh, like always, tonight, after I give my sentiments, I will open the phone lines for you to also uh, call in and make your contributions. I know a lot of you con uh, complain that uh, you fail to go through because the line is usually very busy. Unfortunately, uh, at the moment, I don't think there's anything I can do, but uh, I don't know, maybe in future we'll, we'll find a way such that we can be able to accommodate more people um, on the program because a lot of you I have received a number of phone calls, people complaining, I tried to call, I tried to call, but I don't go through. So let's see what, uh, um, how things go. We might uh, find a solution in future. If you have any, any ideas uh, on how we can improve um, on this program, I would be glad to hear from you. If you have any, uh, you know, ideas on how, we can improve on this program. I'll gladly, uh, I'll I'll be glad to, to to hear you out. Yeah. So tonight, I was very excited when I came out. I was like, you know, like when you have uh, these uh, uh, the so-called last bones of my HH. Tonight, I was going to be the last born of my HH who comes up and say, Daddy, when you were away, this is what happened to me. I was really, really excited to come and tell the story, to come and tell Daddy, Daddy, when you are away, this is what happened to me. Hoping that Daddy will protect me. But unfortunately, when Daddy arrived, the statements that Daddy made when he arrived at the airport has really just put me off and I'm like, I'm now scared. I'm now scared. I'm feeling like, whoa. I thought daddy didn't know about this. I thought I can speak to daddy and dad will protect me. But the statement that came from the president when he arrived at the airport, ish, it doesn't inspire me. It makes me scared. And I'm telling you, I am scared. I will not pretend, me, I don't pretend, me, I give you my feelings. I'm just, I'm just a human being with flesh and blood. That's all I am. I'm not a superhuman being. So I don't want anyone to think of me <clears throat> like I'm anything special. No, I get scared. I get scared. And these days, I'm not pretending I have been scared. From the time that those people came to my house, I have been scared. I have been scared. I have been moving around scared. Even when I was arrested, when I was inside there, I have been scared. Yesterday, it, it was even worse. And even today, I came in, the first thing that I did is to start restoring my, my, my security system. I've been since I came up, just been working on my security system. And I want to uh, thank one gentleman who actually helped me with 1,500 kwacha to 
restore uh, to buy some of my my things well what i've just done is just to restore what i could but i need a proper system i need to to overhaul the whole the whole security system around my house and this is what i'll be working on uh tomorrow and saturday hopefully i will have the money because again you know the security system to install it and so on and so forth it costs a lot of money but I'm praying that God will open the way for me and put the security system. I know the security system cannot save me. It's only God that can save me. But nonetheless, in Bemba, we say, you can't just sit back or lesa afwabaya for would be one of the. You can't just sit back and say, no, God will protect me. And then you leave yourself exposed. No, you need to put some protection. So, I'm hoping that uh, uh, I'll manage, you know, uh, today, tomorrow, to, to restore my, uh, my system and enhance it. I need to enhance it seriously because really, I, uh, I, 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 I am fighting, I am fighting big guys here. I am fighting big guys here. I'm not actually fighting. I think I should say I'm being targeted by big guys here. I'm not fighting. I'm not fighting anyone. But I am being targeted by big guys. Big guys. And I thought President Akainde Ichilema would be one that I would run to. But from the statement that came when he was at State House, I don't think, I don't think President Akainde Ichilema would protect me. That's the way I feel. Unfortunately, I am terribly scared but before i go on with all that let me say thank you very much for the support that you gave me i want to start by thanking you for the support that you gave me i know a number of you were posting on social media a number of you came and visited me bana kangwa was at hand to come at night the first night i was there bana kangwa was there uh bana kangwa i think some of you you know bana kangwa you know, there is a lady that uh, makes very good, um, very good contributions on this program. She calls and she came to see me. Uh, the other person that also came to see me is that man who calls me Messiah. It was glad, I was glad to see you. It was nice to see you. You know, I just hear your voice when you call on this program. It was nice to see you with the other gentleman that you, you came with, uh, and I'm grateful also for the gift that you left. I'm really grateful for the gift that you left. Really, you lived by it when you said, Ine, I'll be coming to you. I'll be coming to stand with you. You, you. you did it. You did it. You stood with me. You didn't sit back. You came to visit me and even left me uh, a gift. I am very grateful. I am also very grateful. I, I want to say thank you, thank you very much to Makebi Zulu and company. Makebi Zulu and company, you know, it is not one lawyer. Of course, there was one lawyer that was attached, who was attached to me, uh, and he did very well. But it is as a result of all the lawyers of Makebi Zulu's, you know, coming in. Uh, I'm very grateful. Makebi Zulu, I'm really, really grateful for the support you gave me. Uh, Jonas Zimba, Botha, uh, Griffin, uh, Piri, I am really, really grateful for the overwhelming support that she, you, you gave me. And I want to tell people that you would have seen these lawyers working so hard as if they are being paid millions. I never paid anything. I never paid anything. And this is one of the things that I talk about to say, you know, when you are in these situations, you need lawyers. Without lawyers, it becomes very difficult. And um, I am humbled by the fact that, you know, lawyers come to help even when I've not been, when I've not paid them anything. You people have been saying, no, we can be contributing something for lawyers. I really wish, uh, you know, I could even buy even them just it's too boy. I wish I could, but it happened at a time when I had no money whatsoever. I had nothing, nothing. I couldn't even have money to buy a flash disk, a flash disk. 
I wanted to buy a flash disk to back up my information. I didn't have it. So I'm very, very grateful that lawyers dedicated themselves. So please, you, I, I'm saying this not for anything. I want you to, to know. I want to, you to know the truth. Because when you hear the Makebi Zulu, no. Hey, they, he's paying them so much. PF is paying them so much. Nothing. Nothing. This time, these lawyers, Makebi Zulu called me. Jonas was, was on hand. You know, um, though he didn't come with us to, to force headquarters, but he was on hand every step of the way calling. They were brainstorming. What do we do at this point? And so on and so forth. Bota was moving with me to force headquarters together with uh, Griffin. And as well as uh, uh, Piri also came in. So I'm really, really grateful to Makebi, Makebi Zulu advocates. I will not, I'll be failing in my, I'll be, I'll be failing in my uh, salutations, not to mention Benjamin Muelo from Linus uh, and Company. He, I mean, he's, he's a lawyer that is like, he's like a brother to me. He's like a brother. Yes, he's a lawyer. He comes to represent, but he's like a brother. He runs, he runs for me. He comes for me. He doesn't even ask, hey, what about this? No, he just comes. The moment he heard, he also came on board. He was at Force Headquarters. When they came here to search, they came to my house to search. He was here and he has been with me through and through until I came out. So I am really, really grateful to Makebi Zulu, uh, Linus and Company, uh, especially through uh, Mr. Benjamin Muelwa. I'm really, really grateful. You threw yourself into it without looking at, at how much you're going to get. It was not easy. This time around, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. We had a very, very difficult time. Lawyers worked 24-7, and I mean it, literally 24-7. Lawyers worked 24 7 Seven, I can assure you that because they were not having lunch for the past two days. No lunch, knocking off late, you know, because so much was, was going on. Within this short period, so much was going on. The four headquarters and whoever was in the peripheries, the hand that could not be seen, they were working very hard and lawyers were there to try and defend me, to try and fight for justice. You did a great job. You did a great job. Um, of course, I want to thank uh, uh, also, uh, you know, my brothers from the PF, if I could put it that way. My brothers from the PF, Chanda Kawe, uh, Honorable Bran Mundubile, you know, he was there. I mean, Bran Mundubile. Say, those people, you people say, what? Eh? Uh, Brand Mundubile, hey, he gives you money and whatever, whatever. That's why, you know, Brand Mundubile is just a leader. He's just a leader, he's a brother. He was, he's always there. He's always there. He's a big guy, like many other big guys. But he reduces himself to come and see me. And I know it is not that he comes because I support him. No, he comes because he's a brother. And he, it's not only with me. Brand Mundubile does that to other people. Uh, so, really, I, I, I can only say he's a man with a good heart, he's pragmatic, because that is what is very important, being pragmatic. You know, when you talk about support, you need to be pragmatic. You need to be pragmatic. It's not enough to say, we are with you, we are with you, we are with you. You need to be pragmatic. And Brad Mundubile has been very pragmatic, uh, uh, you know, in instances when... I am in these uh, difficulties. This time around, Chandakawe was also there. He came, bought us food, even, you know, with other, other cellmates there at uh, Woodlands. You know, they had a good lunch yesterday. We had a good lunch, all of us, with Nshima, chicken, you know, meatballs. I'm grateful. I'm really grateful, my brother, what you did. Um, I mean, it's... You, I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm not saying this for the camera, for social media. I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart, that what you did was really uh, amazing. It was humbling. It was generous of you. I know also that uh, other people uh, behind, you know, were also 
calling. I, I, I mean, I, I will not, I will not hesitate to to say this that uh, President Edgar Lungu was also, you know, constantly checking up on on me. Though he was not talking to me, but you, at least through people that were coming, he was able to call. Um, I want to say that this time around, I felt Vakateka. I want to say that this time around, I felt your presence, and I really, really appreciate. Uh, the former president, uh, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu, I am really grateful. I felt your presence because the people that you were communicating with, they were telling me, he has asked us to check on you, how you are doing. I'm, I'm really grateful. I'm really, really grateful. I felt, yes, you know, there are people that are caring out there. I'm grateful. I'm grateful also you know, to my young man, you know, uh, who is always, uh, you know, my right, my right hand man, uh, Andy, I'm grateful, you know, you were there, you know, even staying there, even coming at home, looking after my house and, and everything. I'm, 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 I'm so grateful. I am also very grateful to my, my gardener, you know, the guy that works for me, the guy that works for me stood by me he stood by me don't believe those social media stories that uh, the gardener for Chirifatayali has turned into a state witness there is nothing like turning him into a state witness no crime happened here no crime by us happened no crime did i commit i couldn't commit any crime so there is nothing like somebody turning against me turning into a state witness there is nothing i didn't commit any crime i haven't committed any crime so there is nothing like somebody turning into a, a state witness richard is just a victim like me if anything richard was was even more traumatized than me because richard encountered those people richard was they tied his hands they tied his hands he was with them he, he, he had communication. He had a, a contact with them. So I can imagine how he felt. He must have been very traumatized. He must have been very traumatized. And it is a pity that after going through that, Richard ended up, Muma Seos, ended up, ended up even being beaten. Ended up Maseozi, sleeping Maseozi, and being beaten. Richard was beaten, and I haven't seen him yet because he was released yesterday, and today he has been home, not feeling well. So um, I'm hoping I'll be able to see him uh, tomorrow. It is, it is quite unfortunate. But here, what I'm doing is to say thank you, and I apologize, I sincerely apologize to Richard and his family for putting him through what he has gone through. He didn't need to go through that. He is just an innocent guy who comes here, works for me. He's, he looks after my vegetables. Those vegetables you see, that is the guy that looks after those vegetables. You know, he, he just works uh, for me. That's all. That's all. I'm really, really grateful to, uh, to him. I'm grateful also to the lady that works in here, uh, in the house. She's also the one that, you know, prepares things, cleans the house, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful to everyone. I'm grateful to everyone. I don't want to take anyone for granted. Even you that sent me messages on your phones, I am grateful. I don't want to take anyone for granted. I don't want to be a person who doesn't appreciate. I want you to know that whatever you did for me, I am grateful. I'm not a rich man. I'm not a big guy. But out of your love, out of your care, out of your generosity, you did whatever you did for me. I am grateful, highly, highly grateful. I, I can't say I'm going to repay you. I can't repay you. The only thing I can do is to be true. Yes, thank you very much, Joseph Casondemwenda. Uh, yes, Casondemwenda came. And Casondemwenda was there the other day, and even today he was here. Yeah, I think he was there yesterday, and even today he was there. My brother Casondemwenda, I am grateful. Thank you very much, Casondemwenda. You, you were, you, you were there like an angel outside. You know, you are the one actually that helped. As I will try to explain 
in whatever. You people who were who saw me being taken when I was being taken to a command center, I mean, I think you played a big role. You played a big role. I'm very, very grateful. Uh, I also want to say that not all police officers are bad. Not all police officers are bad. And uh, I'm here not going to, to bash police officers. No. 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 This is not for you. Tonight, I'm not going to... I'm not here to bash you, police officers. I know you are watching and you are sitting on your edges. You are thinking I'm going to start calling out your names one by one. Is including that uh, assistant uh, commissioner uh, and uh, my other director. No, I'm not. I'm not. And uh, I encountered that director, that director who is quite famous, but I'm not going to mention his name. This time around, I felt different. The spirit when I met you in that corridor, it was different. Other people, I know you are working let me just say that I could see in most of you that you are working under very difficult situations. This is the truth. I can see that a number of you police officers, I could see your demeanor. Much as you try to be professional, much as you try to, you know, to, to put up these faces, but I could, I could read your spirit. You know, we are human beings. We have got faces. We have got bodies. But you know, when inside, no matter what you are doing, because out of duty, but inside you, if you don't agree with it, it can be seen. It can be seen. And I could feel it. I could feel it. I know you, most of you police officers, you know, you sympathize with me. Those of you who came here, who saw, who walked through the scene of crime, who reconstructed the scene of crime, most of you, you know what I went through. And I know you sympathize with me. I know you do. But you are working under very difficult circumstances. I understand you, my brothers and sisters. And believe you me, from the bottom of my heart, I've got nothing against you. Nothing against you. Nothing. I hold no grudge. I understand the situation. I understand the job that you have to do. It is, it is okay. It is well. It is well, there is a God who is seeing whatever is happening. There is a God who is seeing whatever is happening. And I want you to know that that God who is there, that God who you worship, because I know all of you, you are Christians, all of you know God. That God who you worship has spoken to me. Has spoken to me. He tells me, Chilufatayali, these people are innocent. Don't hold any grudge against them. And I hold no grudge. I hold no grudge on all the police officers that I encountered because I could see, I, I mean, I, I might just feel one person, only one person, only one lady, one woman made me, made my spirit like boom. Only one woman, I must say, only one woman, one police woman made my spirit like, no, this woman is not, you know, just being i don't know i don't know what's a problem but anyway i encountered her once but it's okay it's okay but really police officers i'm not here to start calling out your names no i'm not here to call to call out your names i'm not here to 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 damn you for not being a, a for not being clever or whatever whatever no you are working under difficult circumstances the problem is in the leadership of President Haka in the This is where the problem is. This is where the problem is. And I'm sorry, I will not, uh, I will not fear to say this. The problem is in the leadership. The problem is in the leadership. I think our men and women in uniform, most of them, most of them are good. Most of them would serve this country properly. But the leadership of President Haka in the is leading them in the other direction. Is leading them in the direction of dictatorship. Which is very, very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. I am not going to, 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 to fear to say this is the dictatorship. I know this is what President Haka in the doesn't like. I know this is why President Haka in the you know, is allowing... He's, a, he's allowing 
uh, people to do these wrong things because he doesn't like what I say. He doesn't like it when I say this is a dictatorship. I know praise singers don't like it when I say President Haka in the is being a dictator. They don't like it. But I'm going to die with it. I choose to die with it. I choose to die with it. I choose to die with my conscience clear, saying things as they are. It's not that I'm not scared. This woman from, from, from the diaspora, I don't know. I mean, she's acting, she's acting way too cheap. Like a woman in a bar, she's acting way too cheap like a woman in a bar looking for 50 kwacha, eh? looking, you know, wooling a woman, wooling a man for a 50 kwacha because she's so desperate and she's just looking for a 50 kwacha. You know, if you have been in a bar and you find this woman, she's selling herself, you know, she's so desperate, she will ask even for a 50 kwacha. Please just give me a, just give me a 50 kwacha and have me. That is how this Linda Banks is behaving. Linda Banks, I'm sorry, I don't usually uh, go for women and I've been trying to hold back, but surely Linda Banks, you are acting like a prostitute in a bar who is willing to sell herself just for a 50 kwacha. I'm telling you, and I'm sorry I have to tell you this, because come on, it's too much. You, you, you can't pretend to be Dao when you claim to be a lecturer where you stay. Where you stay, you claim to be a lecturer and teaching, you know, correct thinking philosophy. And you keep writing nonsense. A woman that you are, you should have a heart. What has made you so desperate that you are selling yourself so cheap? You are selling yourself so cheap. Linda Banks, you are watching. You are selling yourself so cheap. You are stooping so low for a woman that is in an exposed country. For a woman that is lecturing, you are selling yourself too cheap. That other man who is, you know, that old orphan, that old orphan, that one, Nalimu Berira, Chipu Vachesu, it's okay. He can, he can rant as much as he wants. I don't care. But for you, you are disappointing me. That's why I'm even talking about you, Linda Banks. But I'm going to tell you, to give you a shiva, to give you a it's okay. He can, he can do whatever. I don't care. I, I just don't care. And don't be bothered. Even you people, go there, listen to him. But don't, don't, don't be bothered by what he says. He can say anything. It's okay. It's okay. The reality, the reality speaks for itself. The reality speaks. The, my life speaks for itself. My family speaks for itself. I am a more accomplished man than he is. Older than older as he is as uh, as he is than me but certainly <laughs> i have accomplished more and he's, he's making a name out of me that is fine that is fine it's okay when he talks about Chilfatali, he gets some numbers he gets their attention that is okay but for you linda banks i think you can do better i think you can do better you can't be stooping so low you can't be stooping so low linda no come on you can't you can't. Usually people that are out there, we consider them, you know, civilized. We consider them open-minded. We consider them to know about. And most of all, you're a woman, a mother. But then, look at what you're writing. How do you think I'm feeling? I went through a trauma and you keep insisting like it was a joke. It was a lie. Honestly, how dumb can you be? What do you teach your children if you can be so dull to fail to see Clearly to say this is this is not right. How dumb can you be? But nonetheless, anyway, I give it to you. I give it to you. If you want to, to be to be like a prostitute selling yourself at 50 kwacha for whatever it is, it's okay. You can continue on that trajectory. I'll leave you. It's okay, you can continue. I mean, we we all survive differently. We all survive differently. There are a number of them. I mean, Tukutoyo, he was insulting, he's now a diplomat. Uh, uh, my brother, uh, uh, this other brother, it's okay, I'm not going to talk too much about those. But anyway, Kawakawana, you also doing anything. I mean, you need to survive. So, if talking about me and um, make you, give you a life, that is okay. I'm glad that I'm providing, you know, um, something for you. I'm making your life, uh, 
meaningful. It's okay. It's okay. So, having said all these things, I want to bring you to the issue now, to what really happened. What really happened? I want to first of all thank you that you know very well because I kept on, kept on updating you of what was happening. Clearly, people came here. People came here. They came with guns, sophisticated guns. They were not carrying cheap guns. They were not carrying AK-47. They came with guns that, I mean, I only see with the special forces. I only see with special forces, not even the police officers. They were masked. They were masked. They came with a land cruiser. A land cruiser, which for me, looks like a, a land cruiser for some of the top officials in the military. I'm not going to fear. You will kill me for this. Because this is the truth. And I'm not going to run away from saying the truth. Because you are telling me not to. I'm going to say it. This is the truth. They came with a land cruiser, which I've seen among top uh, 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 military officers. I've seen it. I've seen it and I'm sure if the, the, we were to call for the military vehicles, those type of land cruisers, if we were to do a parade, I'm telling you, I would identify that, that, that vehicle. And I'm sure even as I'm talking, some people are able to identify that vehicle. And they came, they tied my, my gardener. They asked him where I was. And they asked him to lead me to lead them to where I was. When I started shooting inside here, they left. They entered the gate. They opened the gate with, you know, without the remote, using, you know, by, by removing the thing there and they opened, which means they were technical. They left the gate open. As they were doing whatever they were doing, the gate was open. When I started shooting, that is when they reversed. And as they reversed, I trust Richard. Richard would not lie. Richard would not tell me, if they didn't tell him that. Richard cannot lie. Richard cannot lie. Yes, you can say, no, it is somebody else who is telling you. But I know Richard did not, is not lying. Why would he lie? Where would he get this notion of this, this thing of saying, where would he get it? This is the truth. This is what we experience. And from my point of view, looking at the arm, looking at the guns, looking at how they were dressed, looking at the, the vehicle they came with, looking at how they conducted themselves, looking at how they drove out with a guy carrying a, 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 a gun behind. I am making this conclusion. I'm making this conclusion and I'm not going to move. I am not going to move. You will charge me you will jail me. I'm not going to change. Because I cannot change the truth. It is the truth. It is what happened. And my suspicion, I'm telling you, you can say whatever it is. Whatever, whatever. You can say whatever you want. I experienced it. And I'm not going to change because you think of, you have got this notion of whatever. Me, I'm not going to change. I'm going to die for it. I will die for it. I am going to maintain for me, I am not pointing it anywhere. I'm pointing it to the army. Those people were not police officers. They were not police officers. As far as I'm concerned, they were not police officers. So, kill me if you want. I still insist those people came from the army. It is unfortunate that the minister, the minister issued a statement exonerating, distancing the army from it as if he can account for all the army officers. Me, I still maintain that what the minister said is not true. I am the one who is telling the truth. Balu Fuma, you can say whatever you want. What you said is not true. What I'm saying is the truth. I am standing by it. I am standing by it. Take me to court for it. I am standing by it. According to me, according to what I saw, I am forming this opinion. My conclusion is out of what I saw, what I experienced. And thank God there were cameras. If there were no cameras, you people wouldn't have believed me. You people wouldn't have believed us. Me and, and, and Richard, you wouldn't have believed us. But thank God for those who have eyes, they can see it. They can see it. You have taken the hard drive. 
if you are going to delete the the, 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 the evidence, if the injection is to delete the evidence, it's okay. I've backed it up. And still, even if there are no video, there is no what, there is no what, me, I experienced it. That, that was an assassination attempt on my life. And the people that I suspect, I'm not going to run away. No, we run the party. Hey, shan, 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 shan. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I can't talk about somebody else. I can't. I can't. I'm not gonna. And tamwantinye, tamwantinye. You will not scare me. You will not scare me from saying the truth. You will not scare me. Nakana. Nakana. Namikanina. You will not scare me from saying the truth. I will say it over and over and over and over. I will say it. Those people for me, I don't think they, are, they came from the police. My conclusion, those came from the army. I can go on further to give you more information, which some of you police officers, you know why I'm saying that. But for now, I'll leave it there. So I went, reported the matter to, to test on police. When I went there the following day, I told you that I think we have just survived an arrest. Because those police officers, the way they conducted themselves, it looked like we had changed already. When I went to, to, to Cheston Police, I went to Cheston Police, reported the next day, they called us. When they called us, the next day we went there, they treated us like, like we were suspects. And I stood up with Richard, we left that place. When I came here, when I came home, the next thing, my lawyers were being called. We want bring him. They assured my lawyers. They assured my lawyers. And I even came here, I told you, thanks to you, some of you said, no, don't go there alone. Some of you said, no, don't go there alone. Some of you even called me the following day to say, no, 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 Daddy, don't go there alone. If you have to go there, go with the lawyer. And indeed, I didn't go with the, I didn't go, but... As a, as a citizen that respects the law, I wrote a letter and sent them a flash. But they said, no, we still want to clarify something with him. And that's how I went with the lawyers. That's how I went with the lawyers. And the thing which was supposed to be, we were even assured, even when we reached four headquarters, we were assured. They assured us. We went into this office of an assistant commission. I'm going to withhold the name because I don't have a grudge. It's not personal. He assured me, no, we are here to help you. And I told him, many times I've come here, I've been disappointed. You have called me for something else and at the end of the day, you change into something else. That's why I was scared. He assured me, no, this time around, we are being professional. We are being professional. We went in, we gave our statement. In a view that we are complainants, I'm a complainant. I'm a client of the police officers wanting to help me, wanting to go and get those people that came for my life. And I gave them the information, gave them the information, gave, gave everything. We even came here, did a search, what, 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 checked everything. We were posing for pictures. Stand, stand here. Touch there. Hey, we took pictures to reconstruct the scene of crime. They took pictures. They took videos. They, I mean, at the end of the day, after finishing all that, when we went back, my brothers and sisters, behold, what was waiting for us? It was a one and caution. When we arrived back there, it was a one and caution. After I took them, I opened my house, showed them everything. Reaching there, they changed to say we are warning and cautioning you. For what? At forgiving false information to a public officer. How have I turned into a, into a suspect? How have I turned into giving false information to a public officer when I'm narrating what happened to me so that you can investigate, so that you can go out there and get those, poli those, those criminals? How do you turn me into a suspect, how? Even if you don't like me, even if you are so desperate, how can you turn a person who has come to report to you, Bakapokola, 
You turn him into a suspect and you are giving false information. And yet he was giving you information so that you can go and investigate. At which point did you, Bakapokola, investigate and decide that indeed I'm lying? At which point? Because I gave you statements. We came here. You checked everything. I even showed you the wire, everything. We come back. We come, we go back. Immed immediately at no. You are giving false information to the to the to the public servant. How? Even if you even if you are impatient, even if you say not tired, you talk too much. Honestly, how can I fail to talk like this? Some people are telling me, not tired today, don't talk. How can I keep quiet? How can I keep quiet after being treated in the manner that I was treated? I went crying when those police officers, when you police officers, you were introducing yourselves. You made me feel comfortable. You made me feel okay. Now, I have security. I have people that cares. They are going to work and find the criminals. Can't you learn setting up? You have already made up your mind. You have already made up your mind. And you made up your mind based on what? Based on what? Because I can assure you, because I know it is not out of your professionalism. I know you police officers, as, a, as, as commissioners, deputies, whatever, whatever, those ranks, those police officers I, I interacted with, they were senior police officers. You didn't reach those positions acting in the manner that you did with me, no? No. For you to reach those positions, it is because you are women and men of credence. You are women and men with experience. You are women and men with intelligentsia. You are women and men that, have, that fight, that protect citizens. But for me, for me, you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it not because of yourselves, no. This is where I bring in leadership. This is where I bring in politics. Because if it wasn't for politics, if it wasn't for politics, you would have done a good job. But because of the politics, because of the leadership of President Haka in the Ichirema, you conducted yourself in the manner that you did. It is not you. It is not you. I am very sure there is no way a police officer would reach those positions, would be there at force headquarters. No, I know. You have got experience. You have, you have sorted out a number of cases. There is no way this case, you would mess up with such a case. Turn it against a, a person and say, no, you, I, you are a suspect. You have given us wrong information. Before you investigate, before you investigate, there is no way. You did that out of undue influence politics you were fitting in the narrative of the minister the minister of defense Valu Fuma, who is not even a police officer who doesn't even have a clue of how an investigation is done he doesn't he's a minister of defense not because he rose through the ranks and became the, the defense minister no he is there because he's a politician appointed by another politician haka in the ichirema and now they have become experts to tell who is lying. When somebody is giving evidence to the, to, the, to, the, to the police, they are the experts. Baka in the he is the chief investigator. Which Kapokola can tell him anything? Which Kapokola can tell him anything? No one can tell him anything. He's the chief investigator. He's the alpha and omega in as far as investigation is concerned. And these are the people that are descending on the police and messing up our police officers. They are messing up our police officers. My brothers and sisters, let us not fight with our police officers. It is not them. I know they can do a good job. It is the politics. It is the time that we are living in, which is a dictatorship. From there, we were separated, myself and my Richard. And by the way, Richard was being charged, if he was being charged, I don't know if he was charged also, I think he was charged with the same offense, giving false information to a, to a public servant. Before he could even speak, 
Richard was even charged before he could even speak there at Fossil headquarters. He was being charged. And from there, that's how we ended up. I ended up in, in Woodlands, Woodlands, Woodlands Police Station. And Richard was taken to Kawata. Thanks to the lawyers who were vigilant, following every way, making sure that they know where they're taking us. Because I don't know where I would have been. If the lawyers were not there, I don't know where I would, I would have been. And, and I'm not speaking from without, I'm speaking from the previous experiences. The previous experiences have ended up in Bukulu, have ended up in uh, Westwood, have ended up in, um, I don't know where, I mean, different places. Eh? But thank God the lawyers were really, really following. And I ended up at Woodlands. Uh, Richard was also followed up, ended up at Kawata Police Station. This was Friday. Hey, this was not Friday. This was this was Wednesday. Thursday, yesterday. Thursday, yesterday, they had agreed. I want you to follow me very well. There was an agreement because I went in on Wednesday. On Thursday, there was an agreement that on at 11 hours, my lawyers and the police will meet. Just about 10 hours, just about 10 hours, I was withdrawn from, from Woodlands, from Woodlands Police Station. Three police officers came. Three police officers came and they got me, put me in a, in a, in a McTooth chaser, cream in color. I was thinking that we are going to force headquarters. Where did we end up? We ended up in Skanze camp. We ended up in Skanze camp in that Achani, that command center. And I'm asking these police officers, Imwe, you said we are going to force headquarters. How come we are at command center? They said, no, this is also force headquarters. This is also force headquarters. But come on, that police officer, Borna, I know, force uh, service headquarters. I know what you call service headquarters, but I call it force headquarters. I know force headquarters and I know the command center. And I know what goes on at the command center. That is a command center which encompasses all security. It encompasses all the security. They are there. All the departments of our security, they are there. And we went there. We went there only with these three officers. When we arrived there, we found somebody who was waiting outside. And we went up third floor and entered room Entered room, uh, room um, 3 20. In this room, there are no people there. There are no people. There are no people. There were only chairs. We entered there and I was wondering, what are we doing here? They couldn't tell me. No, just, just be comfortable. From there, within a short time, one of the police officers called, uh, was called. And he was told, go down. That's how we went down. And we went back to, uh, uh, to Woodlands Police Station. The question that I have is, what did we go to do to, to, to that command center? In an isolated place. Because for me, I didn't see anyone there. That place was isolated, especially that floor. It was isolated. What were we doing there? What were we doing there? What did we go to do there? What did you want to do to me? What did you want to do to me? If I accuse you that you wanted to kill me, are you going to charge me another, and with another offense of seditious? Are you going to charge me with another charge of seditious? You withdrew me from Woodlands Police Station, took me to command center, which was isolated isolated if i say you wanted to kill me there are you going to accuse me of a, a, another crime why did you take me there without the company of my lawyers you knew i had lawyers who were always on standby why did you take me there what did you want to do to me if i say i am scared i'm terrified are you going to charge me for another seditious uh, uh, practice 
is what you are doing to me which is making me scared. It is what is what you are doing to me which is terrorizing me. You are traumatizing me. You are traumatizing me. And this is why I'm saying you are after my life. Because your behavior, your behavior is not straightforward. Professionalism of the police officer, they will identify who they are, they will tell you exactly what is going on, but you are hiding, you are cutting corners, you are doing this. How can I trust you? How can I be in my home and feel comfortable? When you came here and undressed all my security, because even now I'm scared. I don't, I'm, I can't believe that you just came to conduct a search. I'm feeling you came here to see my security. You even took my gun. You even took my gun. How am I going to protect myself? If I'm attacked tonight, how am I going to protect myself? You disabled my CCTV. How am I going to protect myself? Why is all this happening to me? What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? You are accusing me. No, because your mouth. Because your mouth. What does the, my mouth do? My mouth tell you the truth. And if only you can hear what I talk about. It will benefit you, not me. Because you are in government. This issue where you are saying, no, you are dragging the army. You are, there is a conspiracy of the army. It started on an issue that relates to the public. It didn't start with me quarreling with the army from nowhere. No, no, no. I don't instigate things. I don't initiate things. I don't initiate stories. My stories come from the people. I bring what people say. What Zambians talk about. That's what I bring here. That's what I bring here. And the issue relating to the army has got nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with young people whom you yourselves as a government advertised. We are going to employ you. We are going to employ you. You are government, not me. I'm, I'm not part of government. You are the one that advertised last year in October, called young people, and young people came in numbers. Some of them even died in a stampede. So that you can, be, you can employ them. And so many months down the line, you have not come up. You told them the list will be out in, in, in November. It didn't come out. You said December. It didn't come out. You said February. It didn't come out. Up to today, it has not come out. And all I have been doing is talking about that. Am I part of those people who want to be employed as soldiers? No. It is young people out there who are anxious. And have received many text messages, many phone calls. But I had to come con. But I had to talk about this. Ask the government, when are they going to release the list? This is the story. This is the genesis of this, what we are talking about. Where now today I've been charged with seditious practice. It is out of your failure. It is your failure. It is your inefficiency. It is not me. It is your failure. You are the ones that have failed to deliver to the people. And because you have failed to deliver to the people, they come to me. And I have not insulted I have not said the army rise against the government. No, I haven't said that. I've simply asked, can you please release the list? Young people are anxious. I even, I even, I even had, you know, uh, the, 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 the privilege of speaking to you on this program. On this program. Next thing, I'm being threatened. Don't talk about the army. We want to. Now, Papa. What crime have I done? If you are talking about the checks and balances, isn't that checks and balances? When you make a commitment as a government, shouldn't we talk 
as those who are in opposition, shouldn't we talk? Shouldn't we remind you to fulfill what you promised? Shouldn't we remind you? Why should why should we turn out to be you know a, 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 a malevolent when we are just reminding you? Why should we be labeled all these things that you are talking about? Some of you are even saying, hey, 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 PF is using you. But PF, they have got their own problems. Some of the problems have even demolished them here. I've even demolished them here. Even Shaka Dama sides, uh -uh, I've demolished. I've demolished my Galungu here. When he was in power, even now, I have spoken against my Galungu. But I don't have favors. I don't, I don't have bias. When it is wrong, it is wrong. I will say it as it is. Now, with your government, you don't want to be, to be checked. You don't want to be checked. Why are you pursuing me for speaking about that list? Why are you pursuing me? Why are you charging me with seditious practice? Why are you sending people to my home? Because from my point of view, the way you government have come out, and the way everything is coming out, I am now convinced that it's the government that wants to, uh, uh, to, to kill me. I am convinced that it's government who wants to get rid of me. I am convinced that it's government that sent those people to come and kill me here. Because if it is not government, how can... The police all of a sudden change against me, turn against me. When I'm crying for help, I'm crying for help, and you turn against me. What are you protecting? You have gotten the hard drive. You have done all these things that you have done. It is not for me. Whatever you are doing is not for me. You are doing it to protect the perpetrators of that crime. That's what you are doing. You have charged me instead of charging those people that came here. I am the victim, but now I'm the one who is being charged. What about those people? What about those people? And you are saying seditious, seditious practice, seditious intentions. Because you lied that soldiers wanted to kill you, the army wanted to kill you. Hello? If I'm lying, then what is the truth? If I am lying... You have charged me and you want to take me to court. Let's go to court. Let's go to court. Let's go to court. If I'm lying, if me, what I'm saying is a lie, then you will have to tell the truth. You will have to tell the court what the truth is. You will have to tell what the truth is. And we would have to start by identifying those people. If you are accusing me that I'm lying, then tell me the truth. Tell me who are those people. Let's start by identifying those people. Who are they? Let's identify those people. This is what we will, bat we will battle in court. I saw some press singers who don't think properly. Hey, now he's going to court. Now you go and prove. Hey, hey. Relax, press singer. You are indoctrinated. You don't think. Your brain is not with you. It is gone. It is not in your head. Otherwise, if you think, you would know that the burden of proof is on those people who are accusing me. And they will have to prove that actually what I'm saying is, is, is not true. By telling the truth, and we have to start by, they have to bring those people. They have to bring those people. They have to tell us who those people were. If me, I'm saying, those people who came, I have concluded from what I saw, what I experienced, I am concluding that they were from the army. So anyone who is saying anything contrary to that, you must be able to tell me what is. If what I'm saying is not, then you must tell me what is. What is it? You must tell me. Don't just say, no, 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 those are not the army. Those are, don't tell me that. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Tell me who they are. That's why I went to report to the police. And I gave you my suspects. Those are my suspects to me. Those are my suspects. If they are not the ones, tell me who they are. It is as simple as that. 
You have charged me. I am not scared to go to court. I am, I am anxious to go to court because in court, you will show me who those people were. You will bring that land cruiser. You say, this is a land cruiser. And this land cruiser belongs to whoever, whoever, whoever. If it doesn't belong to the army, if it doesn't belong to a top government army officer, you will show me that this army, that this, this vehicle doesn't belong to the army officer. And then we will talk from there. So that is the first thing. I am ready to go to court. I am anxious to go to court. My lawyers are anxious to go to court. And I even told them that I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about this. They said, yes. Just ask them to bring who those people were. Bring those people. Bring those people. If you are telling me they are not from the army, then tell me who they are. Balufuma, you issued a statement. You know, if indeed you respect the law, you will come and stand in that court. You will come and stand in that court, Balufuma. You will tell me what investigations you conducted before the police, because the police have not even given a, a position yet. Yes, they have arrested me and whatever, whatever, but they have not given a position. They have not given a position as far as this case is concerned. Imoba Lufuma, you gave a, you gave a statement. Ida tuka ya kukoti, Balufuma, mkesa, mkesa irondolona. Who are those people? Because she mwaneka imwena mweshiva. Even there and there. Me, I'm saying this. This is what I saw. And this is my conclusion. Imamu like cannot. No, it is not. You will come and tell me the truth. So this case... I mean, I'm not worried, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about this case. And as long as you do the right thing, bringing me to court, no problem. No problem. It is the same thing with these other cases that you bring. Hey, hey, Tari has assaulted a, a policewoman. Hey, me, Tere Mulanda, assaulting a policewoman. We are in court. I can't say anything further. I can't say anything further. I can't say anything further. But you know, when assault happens, we, you know when assault happens. You know when assault happens. Hey, you said Chakuti Chakuti. Hey, Chakuti is a brainchild. Where? Mwalite muku mbepesha. You like putting things in my mouth. I talk too much. But when I talk too much, it doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm talking about. I know what I talk about. I know what I talk about. I reflect. I spend time. To think about what I'm going to say and the implications of what I'm going to say. I don't just utter things anyhow. I don't. Don't take me for a fool that I just open my mouth anyhow. No. Whatever I say is calculated and I have a very good memory of what I say. So some of you, no, but you said this, but you said this, Milore Shafi. Before you start accusing me things, watch them over and over. I know. Even now, if I'm talking, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. This case is not yet in court. That's why I'm talking. Take it to court. Start bringing evidence. We'll be talking in court. These matters, I'm not talking about it because they are in court. And I'm waiting for you in court. You want some cases, you Mumpela. I'm waiting for you in court. And really, if justice is there, I'm an innocent man. Muampatafe, you just hate me. You don't want me because I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth to say, release the list. Muafulwa. You want to shut me up so that no one talks about the list. And it's true. You have managed somehow because that list, people are now not talking. Hey, release the list, release the list. But is it? But hey, Tina. And that's what you want. And that's a dictatorship I'm talking about. That is a dictatorship. When the leaders don't want to be held accountable, that is dictatorship. So when I say Waka in the HM is being a dictator, it is not that me Mbapata. Some of you, you are even, you are even so, so, so dumb to even bring in the issue of tribe. No. No, I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm far away from that. I can work with Waka in the HM and if only Waka in the HM would heed to what I talk about, I'm telling you Waka in the HM would have a better a better presidency than this. You would have a better presidency. 
But because Vahaka in the Ichirema is so preoccupied, is so preoccupied with praises, he only wants praises, you only want praises. Freedom of expression, Kuli Vahaka in the Ichirema is to praise him. When you say something to the contrary, then you are, your, 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 your freedoms are limited. As long as then your freedoms are limited. But I will repeat it, your freed, our freedoms of expression are not limited by your emotions. By the fact that I say something that you don't like, it doesn't mean that I've abrogated my, my freedoms. No. No. I'm within my rights, especially when I'm talking about your governance. I'm within my right. I know it hurts you to hear me say you are a dictator. I know it hurts you. But that doesn't mean that I've insulted you. I haven't insulted you. I'm telling you why I'm calling you a dictator. I'm calling you a dictator because, look, since you came into power, I've now been arrested nine times. Nine times. You have just been in power for one year, eight months. And for what have I been arrested? For speaking out for the Zambian people. Which means you don't want me to talk. And you don't want others to talk. And that is dictatorship. Shilami Tukana. I'm even giving you the basis under which I'm calling you a dictator. And today, like I said, I was excited. I was thinking, today I'm going to talk to Baaka in the Ichirema. I'm going to tell him to say, listen, I went to police and this is what happened. Unfortunately, you come down and you ask a question about something that at least you yourself promised. You are the Vahaka in the Ichirima. You are the one that promised that you are going to sort out this debt issue. You are going to sort it out. You were saying this PF have failed. You were even offering, can you hire us? Instead of you hiring some companies to do the debt management for you, debt negotiations, we can do it. We have the global connections. We have the expertise. We have the intellectual know-how. We can do this for you. You have voluntarily offering yourself. But one year, eight months, Vaka in the HNM, you have failed on that one. One year, eight months, you have failed to sort out something that you said was very easy. You said it was very easy. You're going to sort it out. But up to today, you have failed. And this is the truth. It is not that I'm, I'm, I'm deaf, I'm or whatever. No. No. It is a reality. You have failed. And you are asked today, instead of being vulnerable, and at least now, you are talking about going to China, which is very good, because we have been talking about go to China, go to China, go to China. Now, at least today, you said going to China, very soon I'll be going to China, which is good. Which is good. We are happy about that. We will encourage you. We are happy about that. But what I felt bad, instead of you honoring up, you start pointing at others. Where did you get that thing of talking about? You know, in future, let's look at leadership. Mwanawasa cleaned the balance sheet. But we are here today because of for how long are you going to abuse your predecessors? That is why you were voted in. Zambians, they know, they have learned their lessons, they know where they are coming from. But they recruited you, they put you in state house so that you can sort out this mess. Why do you have to bring up that one today? Why do you have to bring up that one today? Demeaning those who were there. And as it is the today, Vaaka in the HM, as it is today, the people that you are demeaning have done more than you have accomplished. They have accomplished more than you have accomplished as a leader. If you are talking about PF, both Sada and Edgar Lungu, in their one year, eight months, they accomplished more than you have done. And this is not to say, no, Edgar Lungu has paid me, whatever, whatever. No. I'm telling you that you don't have to be referring to these people because you also have one year, eight months. In one year, eight months, if Baaka in the Ichirema, 
You were effective. Like you used to say when you were in opposition. By today, Baka in the we would have moved on this issue. So this is your failure. And why can't you honor it up? Why can't you take it up to say, sorry guys, I thought it's going to be easy, but it's still difficult. I'm still trying. That will be more honorable than start pointing at other people. Now, Baka in the you at this point in time, you are almost two years in power. Gone is the time for you to be pointing back. This is your time. This is your, this is your time. This is your leadership now. We are in your leadership, Baka in the It is your leadership to deliver. We are in your leadership. We are no longer in the leadership of, of Edgar Lungu. We are in your leadership. The failure that we are talking about today is your failure, Waka in the HDMI. We are not talking about the debt that Edgar Lungu left. We are talking about dismantling the debt. We are talking about restructuring the debt. That's what we are talking about. This is on you. This is on you. And when I tell you this, your candidates stand up, your press singer stand up, you are insulting the, our president. I'm not insulting you. And when I talk like this, you send people with guns to come and kill me. When they don't kill me, no, throw him inside without bail because that seditious practice, seditious intention, it is close to treason. It is close to treason. And before, there, were no, no, there was no bond and no bail for seditious practice. So you are almost throwing me into treason. Almost throwing me into treason. For what? For speaking. For telling you the truth. It is becoming treasonable. Now, talking, becoming treasonable under your leadership, what is that type of leadership? Is it democracy or dictatorship? Am I insulting you when I say it's dictatorship? <coughs> I'm not. I'm not. And you know what put me off now? Why I can't tell you my story of what happened, of how I felt that the police did not treat me well. What put me off is when you spoke about Edgar Rungu and he said, no, there was nothing wrong with that raid. According to you, there was nothing wrong with that raid. It is not about me, Edgar Lungu, what, what, forget it. Forget it. It's not about money. It's not, forget it, nothing. But you, Baka in the HDM, honestly, how can you say, how can you say there is nothing wrong with what happened at the former head of state's house? When the police raided his house, when they wanted to break the gate, and you are saying there is nothing wrong. I, I was shocked. I was shocked. I said, now, how can I even complain about my experience? Eh? I had this kind of experience with the police. They called me to force headquarters and they treated me this. How am I going to tell this father? When that big thing, because what happened at the former head of state, that is big. That is big. It was covered everywhere. It is big. He's a former head of state. I'm not a former head of state. I'm just a kapusu. I'm just a river tayari. Edgar Lungu is a former head of state, former president. He's senior to you, by the way. Senior to you. He had power before you. He's senior to you. He's supposed to be respected. And such a thing happened at his house. And you say, there is nothing. I didn't see anything wrong there. There is no harassment there. I'm shocked. Amakaya Chimpua. When I just said that, I said, yeah, I thought I was going to tell him, and you understand. But surely, how can you understand my situation if you can't understand Edgar Lungu's situation? If you see nothing wrong with what happened at Edgar Lungu's house, if you can't see anything wrong, can you see anything wrong with what happened to me? No, you can't. You can't. That's why I just said, 
finish. There is no hope. I'm just scared now because I'm scared now. I don't know what will happen next. If such a thing happened to me and I was terrified and whatever, whatever, and I go to the police, I am longered. I don't even know now. Whatever will happen next, I'm scared now. I am scared. I'm just scared. There is no protection. We have no, we have no recourse. We have no recourse. If what happened at Edgar Lungu, tapale fa mwene mo we baka take away. How did you tapale go through? Because everyone can see. But I work up, even now I can pull up and shiba. Yes, a report was done. You are right, Baka in the Ichi. You are right. Any citizen has a right to go and report. And after reporting, the police have an obligation to investigate. Unfortunately, in my case, they don't have an obligation. In my case, the obligation is to arrest me. But anyway, going back to Ed Galungu's issue. Yes, a citizen reported. And the police had an obligation. But because I know you are watching. I know you are watching. Do you think it is right for the police to go and raid the former head of state's house before they could actually summon the former first lady who was involved to ask her to say what really happened? How come you have these things? Do you think it is right? Do you think it is right to criminalize the former first lady? Do you think it is right to criminalize her and to embarrass the former head of state in the manner that they did? Do you think it is right? If it happens to you, Baka in the Mtinta, she has been mentioned you come out of state house and the police raid your house in the manner that they did. And criminalized by, by mama, by, by Mtinta. Do you think it will be right? I was looking at my mama Mtinta. When you were talking, I could see that she was not very comfortable. I could see that she was not very comfortable. And I'm sure she can tell that this is not right. Because what you are, what you are doing to Ed Galungu will happen to you. I may not be there. I may not live to be there because since you want to kill me, you never know, I might, you might kill me, you might succeed. But anyway, I leave that to God. If that happens to you, do you think that is okay? The police didn't have an opportunity to interrogate her before they could raid the house. And if they had called her and, and had an audience with her, they would have learned that actually she's the person that was swindled the money. And after she was swindled, she she forgave those people because they said we are going to give these properties we don't have the money but take these properties and that's how she got those properties after they realized to say mm -mm, we can't lose our properties and left her all hh and, uh, and Ed Galungu, they are not friends they came and used the the state machinery no they got our things and without asking them, you go and read. Do you think why why each them? That is fair. Do you think that is justice? Do you think that is justice? It is not fair, Waka in each them. You are a president. You may not like some of us. You may not like Ed Galungu. But at least treat him justly. You are the Republican president. We are in our we are in your hands. Treat us well. We don't mean, you know, you know, we don't mean uh, 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 malice against you. We don't have ill intent against you. No. Me, if you do well, I'm telling you, I would even stand with you even in 2026. I will tell Mundubire, please, wait. Let the man finish this step. Because he has delivered. We want other people, not because... Not because we, we don't like you. No, we want other people because you are failing. But if you are doing good, we will actually encourage you. You can use all of us. We are the citizens of this country. And we have got the, an obligation to help this country. Instead of seeing negativity in me, there is something that you can use. And the fact is, you can use me. Look, I've got people that are, that are following me. I've got people that are following me. I'm not useless. I wouldn't have so many people watching me right now. 
Samo vema mabando yapo wa mungu shita. Bala wena. Eh? So this, you can use it. You can use it. The former head of state, Edgar Chagwalungu, you can use him. He's a former head of state, you can use him. Bewa tukuteke mbwa mano. Tukuteke mbwa mano. Leadership is about wisdom. And instead of fighting us, instead of trying to eliminate us, you can use us. You can use me. You can use the former head of state. You can. You can. And this country would benefit. Not what is happening. Killing me will not benefit this country. Killing me will not take the ch uh, these young people uh, into recruitment. No. But using me with the gifts that I have, it would benefit this country and it would benefit you as a leader. Using Ed Galungu as a former head of state, it will benefit, benefit this country and it will benefit you as a leader. Picking quarrels and uh, demonizing, uh, demonizing him, maligning him, we will not help you. We will not help you. And you have even gone ahead. You have removed security. You have removed security from his house. You are saying, no, they were 13, they were too much. I understand. I know the background of that. I know why uh, security was beefed up. Security was beefed up at the former head of state because he was attacked. That is when security was beefed up. It is not Edgar Lungu because, I mean, you are seemingly, you are forgetting because you are, you are asking, to say, how did this happen? How did this happen? How it happened, I want to remind you, a president. Your elder brother, your elder brother, the former head of state, was attacked by, the, by, by criminals. And that is when security was beefed up. It is not him who said, bring 13 soldiers to, to or, or 13 police officers. No, it is not him. It is those who are in the security who decided we need more people there. It was embarrassing that he was attacked. It was embarrassing. And since it was embarrassing at that point, those who look into security, they decided to give him more security. So it is not his fault to speak in the manner that you did like he's the one who is ruling and he chose to have those, uh, those, those police officers to himself. No, he didn't choose. He didn't choose. And you're saying, no, they are supposed to be three. And even those three who are supposed to be there, it is not just any, any police officer who can go there. Uh -uh. It is not. It is not any whatever. You must make him comfortable. You must give him people that he can work with. You can't give him people that he cannot work with. You can't give him a driver who he is not comfortable with. Even yourself, when you leave office, surely you can't take any driver to say, no, as long as he's a police officer. No, you must be comfortable. So you can't just impose security officers who he's not comfortable with. He's supposed to be comfortable. He's supposed to feel secure. And that is why you have those people now manning Edgar Lunguzi in house. We have now have people that have mobilized themselves and they are money in the house. And you as the head of state, instead of correcting this situation, you start talking about, no, they are abrogating the law. Next, we will see people being arrested at Edgar Lunguzi gate. Is this leadership? Is this leadership? Is this the best way you can rule this country? You can't rule a country with an iron fist. You can't. This is a democracy. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpondo. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.